Hey, thank you for tuning in. These are podcasts from Playa del Carmen, Mexico, during lockdown in the time of COVID-19. Hello, my dear followers, likers and friends. Thank you for tuning in today. This is podcast diaries number 11. I do this podcast rather intuitive. Sometimes I dot down some topics that I could address, but then events happen and the moment passes and I don't feel like talking about it anymore. Um, And I realize when I listen back to them, there's a lot of um and pauses. That is because, like I say, I do them rather intuitive. And when you have a conversation with a good friend, that person is sitting opposite of you and there's an interaction. And then the ums and pauses are usually filled in by the other person. And that's what I really miss when I do this podcast. Although I do approach them as if I'm sitting with you and we are having a coffee and we just talk about daily life and world matters and stuff that's keeping my mind occupied during uh, this lockdown. This morning on Twitter, no, it was not this morning, it was a a while ago on Twitter, maybe two, three days ago, I replied to someone, I'm learning things about myself that I doubt if I like that. I knew I was impatient, um, but, and I I knew I could have a bad temper uh, in a way that I could respond very cynical or sarcastic or uh, be a bit short or feel an enormous urge to not reach out to anyone and just withdraw in myself and kind of float in the mood. I, I, I knew all that about myself and um, it has never been a real problem. Now I also learned that I overthink so much. People sometimes told me, you're way too much in your head, you should be more in your heart. But the heart is a very confusing place for me. And I have a reputation of making wrong decisions based on emotions. So I kind of trained myself to be in my head a lot, um, to find a balance between my emotional outburst and my... uh, a rational self or something like that. I, I don't know how to explain this properly. But um, at the moment, I am way too much in my head. Also, I'm way too open. Uh, everything hits twice as hard as it uh, normally does. Uh, I am a high sensitive person. And sometimes I do feel that the load of the, the burden of the world is a load on my shoulders. But at the moment, it's kind of like an overdrive. It's like all the news, all the tweets I read, all the social media interaction just hits double hard. And uh, it makes me wonder if the whole thing that's going on with this man I'm uh, involved with at the moment online is also hitting too hard. And am I in it for the right reasons? And do I feel the feelings I feel? from the right source or is it also in overdrive um, emphasized you know like I feel like I'm a mouse in a wheel and I'm running like crazy and I'm getting nowhere um, I, I I talked to him about that last night I, I told him I, how I felt like that mouse in a wheel and he says don't feel like that Because what we're doing at the moment is we get to know each other in a way that is unique. And then I thought, I'm not getting to know you at all. I know you, but I don't know you. I, I, it's difficult to keep focused uh, on relationships, not even with this man, but also relationships with people I interact with uh, on social media and people that I call friends. Um, I seem to be sending out way more hearts, for example, uh, than I did before. So that means that although I'm a lot in my mind, I'm also in an emotional overdrive. Um, It's like 
I'm under this microscope and everything seems to be enlarged. And that's probably because my world has become smaller, but still, it makes me look at myself in a way I've never had to look at myself before, because there was so much distraction. Now, taking all the distraction out, I cannot wonder and think about certain areas in my life that I find that I need to improve. Uh, I'm always very open and honest with people. Uh, I can be very blunt as well. I, I speak my mind. You can see my face, uh, the emotions in my face. I'm like an open book. I don't know where I'm going with this, <laughs> uh, but what I, I, I think what I'm trying to say is that I dislike the emotional imbalance. Uh, I think at my age, <clears throat> one should be more at balance. Um, one moment I'm all happy, the next moment I find myself in tears. I already told you that before in previous podcasts. It kind of starts to worry me. So this morning I took out my diary and I wrote about tears. Uh, I just wrote down the word and let uh, the creativity or the energy flow. That's a method I use a lot. It's called intuitive writing. And uh, it comes from the artist way, a book I read many, many years ago. And I had adapted certain um, items and topics of that book and implemented them in my daily life because they help me to keep, keep a grip on everything. No, not everything, um, especially me, my creative flow, that overthinking that I do and stuff like that. So I took my diary, I wrote down the word tears and I started writing on the topic of tears. Why am I crying so much? Because it's not really crying, you know? It's not um, like I'm sobbing or screaming and there's no snot and you know, all the gross things that your eyes get all red and swollen and your face looks shit because you cried. No, it's just tears running down my cheeks. And I can't stop them. I can blame the cataract surgery I had a few months ago, but that's rubbish. Those tears, you know, from irritation, dry eyes, too bright a light, that's already gone. These are different tears. These have an emotional base. So what are these tears that are running down my cheek? Uh, sometimes for hours. I, I don't even try to stop them anymore. I think something inside of me is healing. Amidst of this enormous chaos the world is in and our lives are going through, I think I'm healing. And uh, like I said before, there's so much distraction. You kind of stick your head in the sand for old stuff that should be cleaned up, but you, you don't want to linger in the past, you know, stuff like that. So you kind of step over it and move forward. I think this whole lockdown thing and having so much time to self-reflect uh, and the fact that I met a man that seems to love unconditionally uh, in some way. It doesn't matter how I look. It doesn't matter if my boobs are hanging, if, if gra gravity gets a hold of my body. It doesn't matter if I make a sick joke or a stupid mistake or if we misunderstand each other and get extremely angry and pissed off and uh, somehow it's always good even more than good it's like coming home it's like finding that old winter coat in the attic and you put it on and you think why did I put that in the attic this is an amazing coat it feels so comfortable and I think that that uh, is what's healing me or something. Um, this morning, Facebook reminded me of uh, a quote I posted a long time ago. It's not mine. I stole it from the internet. Um, let me see if I can find it on Facebook. I will read it to you. I believe in the kind of love that doesn't demand me to prove my worth and sit in anxiety. I crave a natural, natural connection, where my soul is able to recognize a feeling of home in another. Something free-flowing, something simple, 
something that allows me to be me without question. And that seems to be a quote from Joe Palermo, and it was posted once by WordPorn. That is exactly what I mean. Um, I have been craving for that natural connection, and now I may have found it. And maybe finding something that flows so free, and that is so simple, because basically that's what it is. It's very simple. It's not... All my previous relationships were about anxiety. Would he like me? Will he love me? Will he still love me if I do this? Will, or the guy would tell me, well, you're okay, but maybe you should keep your emotions in control a little bit. You know, there was always the but, always the adjustment, always the, I don't know, always not good enough, that kind of feeling. And that made me very anxious in relationships and now I'm not anxious as all, at all. I know this guy but I don't know him at all and yet I've never felt so relaxed in a relationship. I, I trust him, I believe the things he says to me and maybe I'm naive, maybe maybe I'm so naive this is my head acting up again like maybe in two three months I'll be all over you guys with, he broke my heart, he was a liar. I don't know what, what, what could happen. But what cannot be taken away from me is this, what's happening right now. And I think it's healing. And I think that's what those crazy tears are about. Because they're silent tears. And once I learned in my, uh, uh, in my training... Uh, or a stress counselor, uh, the tears are healing. And not the sobbing and the crying and the screaming and the snot, but the tears. The tears are healing. And these are tears. You know, guys, there's so much going on in a lockdown. I sometimes wonder how you guys experience or do you just float from one wine, one wine bottle to another like I see so many people in my Twitter timeline do do you guys go through stuff like this as well or is it just me being all weird or being a free spirit as he calls me I can accept the tears because it's my strong belief that in the end of the lockdown I will be a better person because I'm healing thank you for listening I talk to you tomorrow uh, I will think of a subject to talk about tomorrow. I'm not sure if I will stick to that. But maybe I will talk about emigration and uh, living in a foreign country. And uh, then shit happens. And how to prepare for that. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.